Hello everyone, welcome to another Minecraft video and today I'm going to show you how to make awesome looking renders like this. Now your PC needs to be quite powerful so let's continue. So you're going to open up your browser and you're going to go to blender.org which I'll leave a link in the description. Then you're going to download Blender, select the version that you use and just download. Once that is done installing you can open up Blender and there you go. I'll show you a few basic controls before we go any further. So we'll scroll wheel to zoom in and out. You hold in the middle mouse button to move around like this. Holding shift in the middle mouse button will allow you to pan around. And for rendering, you can hold in Z. It will give you a bunch of rendering options like material preview and the overall render. And we're going to hit X to delete this. All right, let's get started. So we're going to delete this light since we don't really need it. And we're going to import some Minecraft textures. So you want to go search percent app data percent. Go into dot Minecraft versions. And any version that you choose, it will come up with those textures. So I'm going to do the latest snapshot. And you're going to see a dot jar file over here. So with a program called 7zip, which I'll leave in a link in the description, you hit the extract files over here. Once you're done with that, you're going to open up the folder and there will be tons of other files. So you're just going to delete everything except for the assets folder. So then you're going to open up assets, Minecraft, textures, block, and now you have all of these. Let's do an ore. We're going to do diamond ore over here. I'm going to copy it and just paste it onto the desktop. Then in Blender, you want to go hit shift plus A it will come up with all these options you're going to do the very top one mesh and click plane then what you want to do is going to go to this top tab over here called shading and you're going to see this Make holding Z for material preview so you can see what you're looking at then you're going to hit this new button now this is node graphs so it might get a bit complicated but if you follow along it won't be that hard so now you want to go down and import that diamond ore you can just drag the texture into blender or you can locate the textures over here now you want to drag the diamond ore texture and change liner to closest then you're going to plug in color to base color so that will give us the main texture now we can use all these options like we can make it metallic and specular all these things just to make it look very shiny. Now we have the texture in Blender, you're going to go back to Layout over here and then you're going to hit Tab. Then you're going to right click and hit Subdivide four times. Now every subdivision is now in line with each pixel. So now you want to go to the top to Face Select. So you can select these pixels, you hold in Shift to select multiple pixels which is what we'll be using and you can drag so you can select multiple at the same time then once you have all the pixels you want to be selected you can right click it and hit extrude individual faces then you can raise it up like this now you can see this is more 3D now but then you also have the Z fighting problem so we're going to fix that now you're going to select each face on each side like this once you're done with that you're going to go to the top and hit UV editing then select everything hit G to move it around, hit Y to lock it in this way and then click so that the lines are in the pixels once you're done with that you can see that they've been fixed so now just do to every side of the model and over here you can hit X to lock it on this side Once you're done with your UV editing, you can go back to Layout, and this is your 3D model. Now that the model's done, you can select the plane, hit R to rotate it, then you're going to hit X to keep it on this axis, or Y to keep it on the other one, but you're going to hit X. Then you just hit 90 on your keyboard, on the numbers, and it will lock it like this. Then you're going to hit G to move around, Z to lock it on the Z axis, and then you're just going to hit 1, so it's now on top of the grid. Then you're going to select this, you can hit G again and you can hit control to keep it on the grid. Wait. 
Then you're going to move it, you're going to hit control, and it's going to snap to the grid. You're going to use this so you can properly align each face. You're going to hit control C, then control V. Then you can move it around like this, then you're going to hit R to rotate, then Z to keep it on the Z axis. Then you can hit control to align this properly and snap to grid. So you can make this perfectly straight. And then what you're going to do is just position each face like so. Now you have all four sides, then we can just select a face, copy and paste it, move it to the middle, and then you're going to move it up once, like this, and then you're going to hit R, X, and then you can just flip it around so it fits the top of the block, and then do the same under the block. Now the block is finished, you can hit Shift A, Mesh, and then here's a plane, put it down, hit S to scale, and you can just scale it up so it's like a nice floor. Then here's your camera. So if you have a numpad on your keyboard, you just hit numpad 0, and you can look in the view of the camera. And then over here, there's a little arrow in the top, which you open up. It will give you a bunch of options to move and scale the camera. Or you can just hit N on the keyboard. Then you're going to go to this X axis. You're going to move this around so that the block will be centered in the frame. Somewhat there. Then what you want to do is you're going to go to this option, Render Properties. Then you're going to hit Render Engine from EV to Cycles. Then you're hold in Z, go to Rendered. And here we go. Go back to Material View. And then what you want to do is go to edit on the top here, preferences, you want to go down to system, then hit the CUDA option. Now here you can enable your graphics card that you're using and your CPU. Then once you're done with that, you can just press this and you can select autosave if it's not already ticked, but if it's not ticked then you just hit save preferences. Then you can quit out of that and then go over here and change CPU to GPU so that means this will render much faster than before here you can hit shift A you can get yourself a light hit G and move it around like this here you can go to the light properties over here and change how bright it is how large it is and the color Then you can hit numpad 0 to go into camera view and this is what your render will look like when it's done. There you go. Now the next step before your render is you want to go to the top here to compositing. You're going to tick this, use nodes. Then these two things will come up. Then the next step is to come to this little button and look for denoising data. You're going to click that. Then all of a sudden you have way more options. You can just move this here. Hit Shift A to add stuff. Then just search noise. Here we go. Then you can unplug this, plug it into image in the denoise, and then plug that back into composite. Then you can just plug these two things, normal to normal, albedo to albedo. You can go back to layout to see your model. Then you can go down to output options over here. Here you can change the resolution. This is 1920 by 1080. And you can and this is a 100%. You can change this to 200% and this will become a 4K image. But I'll just leave it at 100 Now with everything set up, all you need to do is render the image. Now what you can do is hit numpad 0 to see your camera. You can select the camera by selecting it here. Hit to the camera options. And over here you can choose zoom options, depth of field, so it's blurry in the background. And when you use depth of field, you can enable, you can go to viewport display, hit limits, so it has this line. And then here with distance in depth of field, you can choose where it will be blurry and where it's not. Go back into the camera, and you can see depth of field working. It's nice for some good looking pictures. Now when, you, when you, now when your block or scene is done, all you have to do is render. So then you can just hit F12. And this is where your computer will start rendering the image. 
So when you zoom on in the image, you can see a random jitter of pixels. That's called noise. So what the denoise node would do earlier was just to remove this and will become a nice, smoother, clean image. As you can see here, when you zoom into the image, it says it has a lot of noise. So the denoise node from earlier will remove this and will become a nice, more clean image. There you go, it's done. And it denoised it. And there's your render complete. Then all you have to do is go to the top, hit image, save as. Then you can put it on the desktop. Diamond, save image. And now, here's your render. Now we're going to put it up a notch. We're going to delete this cube and we're going to add in another plane. Select the plane, go to shading, new, and let's select a different block this time. A block that glows, preferably. Here's some glowstone. We can copy it, paste it onto the desktop, and then drag it into Blender. We can just put this into color, and this will be blurry, so that's why we put this option to closest. So this is our glowstone. We can go back to layout, hit material preview, here we go, you can select this, hit tab, subdivide it four times, hit face view. If you have a different block, you can hit select, then go down to select random. Hit that, it's going to select random faces, right click it, extrude individual faces, then we'll do this. Well, this is glowstone, so we won't be doing that. And let's say that you want this to glow, because this is glowstone. So we're going to go down here to the Material tab over here. Then you're going to change this principle to BSDF to Emission. Or you can just go into Shading and it will do everything exactly the same. The next what you want to do, since we're changing this to an Emission, we're going to put back the Glowstone texture and plug the Glowstone into the Emission, which will then plug into the Material Output. I'm going to change this to closest, go back to layout, and now this glows. Here we go, as you can see it's glowing. I'm going to delete this light to show you. There we go. Or maybe your block that you're using only has specific parts that you want it to glow with. So then you can select the different faces that you want to glow. And then you can come down to this option where all the material stuff is. You can press the plus button, hit new and then go back into shading and then just change this into the emission plug the emission into surface get your glowstone texture back fix this to closest and then over here with all your faces selected then you can change only those faces to the glowstone material so you select the new material that you made and hit assign and then we can change the other material to something else there you go then you hit rendered and as you can see now only the pixels that you chose to glow is now glowing let's say you want to make a render of a block that has multiple faces like a crafting table or a furnace it's very simple all you have to do is select the crafting table just put it on the desktop just add a new plane Select the plane, go to shading, and overall just keep adding the textures in. Here's a crafting table face, then you can just add another plane. And do the same thing, except add another side of the crafting table. So there we go. Then all you have to do next is just position the crafting table. and then you can just keep adding the other faces and here's another tip that you can use so let's say you want to build a scene but you don't want to keep moving around individual faces well what you can do is you can finish your whole block select the faces of all the faces of that block then hit control plus J then what that does is it combines both faces together making one object it's very easy to make these 3D models it's just a pain to set all the UV mappings correctly there you go. 
Now you can also change things like this to a very shiny surface. So just select the faces that you want of that shiny surface. Then you can hit new material, new, and over here you can just change the metallic all the way up and specular and specular tint which I don't know what that does but I guess we can put it on max change the base color back to the image texture so everything I just did was just constructed this then all you have to do in layout here is just hit assign so that did just go darker but it is now very shiny so if I import a light and as you can see this is a very shiny surface compared to the other surfaces. Now if you keep rendering you'll be able to get better and better in making 3D models and eventually you'll be making pictures just as good as this. This is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Goodbye.